So outer stent road producing tumors are very frequent in patients with hypertension. So they are usually detected by imaging modalities in patients that have uh, um, high blood pressure. And you, can, you can also detect these on, um, on, on the metabolites that, are, that, uh, that you can measure in the, in the blood. So uh, these tumors are frequently detected. And in the past, it was very common uh, to take out the, the entire uh, adrenal gland uh, by surgery. So this especially became the case when laparoscopy became the standard of, of treatment care for these patients. Um, but we have a lot of other um, disease that may cause damage to the other adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland is important because the production of the hormones, if you resect both uh, adrenal glands uh, is complicated and the patients are at, at risk for, for uh, severe complications if they don't use the, the daily drugs, for example, the, co uh, the, the cortisone you have to apply. Um, and we know from the literature that a partial adrenalectomy is uh, severely underused in this population. So we have developed a, a technique, a robot-assisted uh, partial adrenalectomy uh, technique where we just prepare around the, the adrenal gland and then we excise, we inucleate uh, the tumor without touching and freeing uh, the adrenal gland. What was done in the past where the, 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 the majority of the surgeon freed the, the entire gland and then clipped part of the, uh, of the adrenal gland. So you're usually losing lots of normal tissue that you don't have to dissect. So we have done this now in, in 10 patients in 11 procedures and the results are quite good. It's a safe procedure. We didn't have any bleeding um, and, and the majority of the patients were relieved. We had only one failure uh, in these patients, a patient with persistent hypertension afterwards. So we had to resect the rest of the adrenal gland where there was hyperplasia uh, in it. Um, so this is something patients should be informed before, sir, before doing this type of surgery, but we believe that this should be the standard of care for smaller uh, aldosterone producing tumors of the adrenal gland. Overall in surgery, well, laparoscopy is established in surgery, and, but laparoscopy, classical laparoscopy has some drawbacks. Is that, uh, one is that well, the arms are straight and you cannot move like you can with your hands. And the second is that you usually don't have three-dimensional view, so it makes it difficult especially to suture. It's, it's very challenging. So the robot is, a, is an evolution of laparoscopy, making it easier for the surgeon because you have the articulating instruments, you can change the instruments very quickly, very easily, and the handling is easier and the surgeon himself laparoscopically has to stand on the table but robotically the position for, for doing this type of surgery is much more, uh, more uh, relaxed, much more comfortable for the surgeon uh, himself. There's always the question if we need this type of, uh, of tool and this, this type of surgery. So uh, for radical prostatectomy this became the standard of care and there's a lot of surgeons around the world who sell the benefits of robotic surgery in radical prostatectomy uh, but actually last year there was published a randomized trial comparing the early results of open versus uh, robotic radical prostatectomy and the difference is rather low so there is a little bit less blood loss but this does not translate into uh, higher transfusion rates in, in the open surgery. Transfusion rates overall are low. Um, and there's a little bit less pain within the first week and this disappears after four weeks. So all the rest of the parameters that were analyzed and that's a very well done trial did not show a difference. So for maybe for radical prostatectomy it's, it doesn't matter that much but for kidney cancer or for adrenal uh, surgery it has really benefit versus open because op open you have a, a relatively large excision that is a, a lumbotomy usually um, and, and uh, that causes severe pain so these patients really benefit from 
robotic and laparoscopic surgery. So that, that's probably the main benefit of these new tools. And we decide on, on a patient-based um, way. It's patient preferences. There are some patients who, say, who believe that one technique is superior to the other. But, for example, in, in prostate cancer, the, the locally advanced disease, the, the, the T3B4 disease with bladder infiltration, we believe is still a case for open surgery. And we're doing this with open surgery. All the others we decide together with the patient. And if there are no contraindications, we can do it in either way. And the patient has to choose which, which modality he, he likes more. There is only one trial for prostate cancer. so. Uh, and it came out just last year, so we tell, we, we tell the patient that, that there is no difference in functional um, and oncological outcome, at least in, with one year. So uh, we have to wait for the longer uh, follow-up results, but we would expect that there is no difference in the future either, so um, we use these data. Um, and for kidney cancer, for example, uh, to do robotic or open partial nephrectomy that strongly depends on the on the on the tumor itself the size of the tumor the location of the tumor and um, the, the the patient itself so there are localizations we we like more to do the open surgery when it's a very centralized tumor we believe it's maybe better to do it with open surgery than with robotic but this may change also in the future